uh, the name of the event is Critical Infrastructure in the Baltic States and Norway, uh, Strategies and Practices <coughs> of uh, Protection and uh, Communication. Uh, like uh, many things um, are hybrid uh, nowadays, uh, so this event is hybrid as well. It's a uh, seminar from uh, one side and also book presentation from uh, the other side. So everybody who is um, uh, present here already has a hard copy of the, of the book and uh, those who are not here and have found this video probably have the link to, uh, also have found the link to the uh, PDF. It's uh, of course not only uh, done by, um, it's not the um, result of the research uh, done only by ICDS, but also by uh, the Latvian Institute of International Affairs, Norwegian Institute of International Affairs, and the uh, Institute of International Relations and Political Science of uh, Vilnius University. Uh, so four different countries and four different approaches and it is uh, financed by EEA and Norway uh, grants. It's uh, not a new topic to ICDS. We have done conducted earlier research on uh, crisis mm -hmm. stocks, for example, or, or physical uh, security. And um, uh, here it's an end of uh, quite a long uh, journey. Uh, the first uh, meeting or preliminary meeting of this uh, project took place already in um, uh, 2019, uh, so well before uh, COVID. And there has been public event in Riga last summer, uh, events in uh, Vilnius and, and Oslo, now Tallinn, and the last and uh, last not least, the conclusive event will be held in Riga in, in uh, two, uh, two days. I'm uh, glad to say that uh, although uh, it's very common uh, currently to say that uh, due to COVID the things didn't work out as they were intended to, but um, this is not something that we should say about uh, this project. Actually, at least for ICDS, we have hosted all the people we had to host uh, in the internship uh, program and also uh, have had the possibility to have the um, research trips that we uh, were supposed to have. And Corona has only, I'd say, underlined the importance of critical infrastructure since um, uh, probably in many countries we are not so satisfied uh, with it uh, after we have seen what kind of problems uh, may arise. And now, uh, before uh, going, giving the floor to the first speaker, mm, I would uh, like to remind the presenters that uh, you are allocated of uh, 10 minutes and uh, please don't, please, please keep it in mind. So, Mari Sanjans from the um, Latvian Institute of International Affairs and also assistant professor at Riga Stradins University, ideological father of this project, if I may uh, say so. Please, the floor is uh, yours and you should see your slides in a second. Thank you so much, Ivo. Thank you also for the contribution to the project and also uh, thank Ramon Loik for his also efforts as a part of this project to, to make it reality. So, and uh, I have the opportunity, I understand, to tell about the Latvian system and I uh, understand in a minute or so we are going to have the presentation uh, on the one and the second screen. But uh, while we are waiting uh, for the presentation, I hear you. Um, uh, so, so let me uh, start with that. So um, uh, each of the four countries, so Latvia, Lithuania, Norway, Estonia, <laughs> so the research teams, they uh, tried to disentangle the critical infrastructure protection system. And uh, each of the teams also gave a uh, name, uh, a bit prosaic, uh, nevertheless, uh, we have one also for Latvia. So in Latvia, in case we have named the system as entangled system in progress amidst uh, terrorism, Russia, and cyber threats. And I will explain why. Uh, the, the system as such, so, so those who have books in front of them in, in physical form and those who don't uh, can visit the, the Latvian Institute of International Affairs website, liia.lv, and you can find uh, the, the book and also these graphs as well. So why have we called the system quite complex, uh, or complicated, entangled? Because uh, there are at least um, four strands of critical infrastructure that we managed to identify, basically. So these are objects, systems, services, which are, uh, to a way, excelled on the, on the national security basis. So we have the national critical infrastructure on the left-hand side, uh, then we have European uh, critical infrastructures, 
essential services and critical financial services. So like uh, for distinct at the same time also interrelated strands. And you can see also um, uh, some boxes with uh, interrupted lines. So these are those which are in force only since this year. So most probably they are not yet fully operational, but, but they're going to be operational. So the central part of this uh, system is the uh, left-hand uh, side uh, uh, strand, which is called the national critical infrastructure, consisting of object systems and parts of objects. I will not um, uh, spend too much time on this because otherwise, uh, you know, I will need uh, more than 10 minutes, you know, on, on one slide only. And, uh, and I hope that we'll be able, you know, to go into further detail and questions uh, later on. That's why I move on with uh, the institutions which are involved in the critical infrastructure protection in Latvia. Again, the picture is quite complicated. And uh, by the way, uh, when I say complicated, it's, it's not to say uh, that it is bad in any way, because you need many institutional actors which can do their things well. Uh, nevertheless, so in Latvia, uh, the main institution in charge, um, at least at the policy level, is the Ministry of Interior. But recently also the Ministry of Defense has become uh, much more active, uh, which, uh, which was driving the, the uh, latest amendments to the uh, law on national security. Uh, so the most ministries, and especially the one responsible for interior, uh, is driving the, the policy level debates and also the tasks that have to be completed. Uh, at the operational level, uh, these are the um, intelligence and counterintelligence agencies, which are in charge of overseeing the critical infrastructure uh, issues. And also computer emergency response team of Latvia is, of course, uh, tasked with the tasks related to IT critical infrastructure. Uh, but, of course, the uh, security measures and safety measures of the critical infrastructure objects and systems themselves, this is the task of the owners and the legal possessors of them. And these institutions are those who de uh, determine things at the strategic and uh, also uh, tactical level. So for the essential services, you have, again, uh, CERT-LV, also Digital Security Supervisory Committee under the Ministry of uh, Defense. And uh, you can also see, see uh, two institutions, and the main of them is Financial and Capital Market Commission for the Critical, critical Financial Services. Uh, so how um, uh, did we get there, and uh, what are the main threats which uh, the system addresses? It's, uh, it's rather clear with the second, third, and fourth tier, because you know the sectors. You have energy sector, transportation sector, so on and on. Uh, however, uh, there are no sectors listed for the left-hand side. It's, it's only told that these are object systems and parts of the objects, which also complicates the um, analysis uh, uh, part of, uh, of our uh, issue. And by the way, what I did not tell, um, I did not mention that essential services, these are only those which uh, depend on uh, information and um, uh, technology, uh, so, so basically those which are related to the uh, cyberspace, but also have links to the, of course, to the physical space. Uh, and uh, here are the, um, well, so to say, the, the historical evolution of the system and, and why uh, Latvia has uh, opted for the approach that it has chosen. So uh, it, it's quite clear that there has been an uh, element of uh, historical inheritance from the Soviet Union. Then, uh, quite interestingly, but maybe not, uh, Latvia was quite a diligent follower uh, in the fight against the global uh, war and terror. Uh, according to the national security concepts and other documents, of Latvia quite much focused on terrorism. Um, in, in 2000s. Uh, it was not only uh, in critical infrastructure protection, but also with the armed forces, where Latvia uh, neglected its territorial defense uh, in favor of uh, expeditionary capabilities. So then, uh, expansion to cyberspace. In fact, uh, this year we mark uh, 10 years since Latvia has established a national cybersecurity uh, system. Uh, and 10 years since the uh, computer emergency response team of Latvia is operational in the form of this. Uh, however, a uh, wake-up call, mild wake-up call, were the events in Tallinn in 2007, of course. Uh, however, in 2010, there was incident in Latvia with the state revenue service, so that, that rang the bells more loudly. 
uh, of course, Russia uh, since 2014 uh, has started to do dominate, you know, the, the perception of things. Uh, however, also the uh, EU uh, legal acts, uh, most uh, significantly the Network Information Security Directive and also previously the Critical Infrastructure Protection Directive for the European Critical Infrastructures uh, has, uh, so to say, had its stake in the development of the Latvian system. Uh, so, uh, when we uh, call the name, so it's quite clear that this is about cyber, uh, quite clear it's about Russia and terrorism. It's obscure with the COVID-19 pandemic, because, you know, as, as you know, after the war, everybody is, is clever. So now uh, COVID dominates things. Uh, was it the case uh, in making the system? Who knows? Uh, maybe yes, maybe no. And uh, there are also some other ap apparent risks like natural disasters, technical failures, human errors, like criminal activities, also China and, of course, Belarus um, uh, in the, in the, in the uh, last months. Uh, about the um, communication, uh, which is essential um, topic um, and, and um, object of discussions in, in democracies about the accountability. Uh, so it's uh, what we have observed and uh, what my colleague Ibia will tell a bit later on that um, there's a gap between the society uh, and the state institutions. Uh, and you know that Latvians, as, as many other nations, are quite self-critical. They don't trust much. And, uh, not, uh, and, and last thing they trust is the parliament and the government, of course, which is to be blamed for uh, many sins, or if, if not all of the sins. Uh, so what we observed that uh, there is, uh, is a bit uh, probably exaggerated uh, culture of secrecy, and, and this sector is also not, uh, not an exception. And that uh, while the um, uh, state institutions tell that, you know, society does not care, uh, what the uh, representatives of mass media and uh, the sociological poll that will be presented a bit later on says that no, uh, there is a bit more interest, uh, to say at least, uh, than institutions perceive. And here's my last slide, uh, and to, to, to finish my things in uh, 10 minutes. Uh, so the Latvian system has uh, both its uh, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so uh, in, in the book, we classified all four countries in two categories. In one uh, is Norway and Estonia, which are more uh, services-focused systems. Uh, so, so they uh, usually put the services in front. So, so you have to protect, uh, defend, ensure safety of something because there is a service uh, to, to which it uh, is attached. Uh, Latvian uh, and Lithuanian systems, uh, however, have evolved from the perception that an object has to be defended against something and not, not the system uh, or s system of services uh, up front. Uh, but a um, uh, system as Latvia's, uh, it allows uh, you know, to, to, to devote much more attention to concrete uh, details uh, uh, and, and also operational procedures. And uh, what also speaks uh, in, in favor of the Latvian system, not only of the Latvian system, that there have been uh, significant failures to the date. We have had, of course, incidents, uh, but uh, nothing significant. Uh, of course, it depends on how you define what is significant. Uh, at the same time, of course, uh, maybe uh, the nature and uh, our opponents have not yet tested us uh, to, to the, the degree where the system would fail. Uh, for recommendations, uh, so, so we call for more emphasis on services, and recently also Latvia has gone that way. Uh, this year, amendments have been done to the national security law, uh, by which uh, more focus is put on the services and uh, not, not on objects and systems. Uh, more clarity, transparency, and accountability, uh, so it's, it's, it's a bit uh, foggy. Uh, somehow, uh, however, in democratic societies, and I mean uh, Norway is a great example where national security concerns uh, and uh, you know, need for secrecy can be uh, quite well balanced also with the uh, right of the society to know. And then um, uh, also another point on uh, more uh, uh, balance in terms among the state and private sector in, in burden because uh, quite much comes to money, so, so it depends on how much money, how, uh, how deep uh, pockets a company has. Uh, from that also the level of security of some object is. And last but not least, wider and more targeted communication. So you have to speak uh, to the members of society. And uh, the COVID pandemic, I mean, not only in Latvia, many other cases is, is again a you know, reminder that you have to engage with the society and have to build the trust.
Uh, Ivo is the leading researcher of our chapter. We are both responsible of the Estonian chapter. Uh, may I have my slides, please? Um, and um, and uh, uh, the most characteristic is uh, about the Estonian system, uh, the case of Estonia here, is the um, building resilience through vital service providers. Uh, Maris or already actually uh, gave quite good brief uh, comparative overview um, about the about the main main differences uh, between those countries. Uh, you also find uh, in the chapter the uh, uh, brief historical overview about the uh, development evolution of the Estonian system. Uh, here's the main national security domains in Estonia uh, from the 2001 uh, from military defense strategy, in 2010, Estonian National Security Concept and current Estonian National Security Concept 2017. Uh, you see the uh, con uh, continuity here. Um, the uh, civil preparedness from 2001 is, is called the uh, maintenance of the resilience of critical services and currently maintenance of the continuous operation of the state and uh, society, among the other important domains of our uh, national security system. So. Um, the general system of the uh, critical infrastructure protection according to Estonia's legislation um, is, is here. There are main uh, two laws, Emergency Act, which uh, um, listed, uh, lists the uh, uh, vital services. There are 14 of them. And the, um, in, in parallel, there are also National Defense Act, uh, which uh, regulates the protection of national defense objects. So the International Security Services uh, main coordinating authority here, uh, owners of the administrators of the national defense objects are responsible, and uh, the, the, there is a list of national defense objects. Uh, this is uh, classified. However, uh, it is known that it includes a number of critical infrastructure objects as well. So um, the, uh, one of the main shifts um, uh, made um, during uh, last month is that the uh, Government office uh, is the coordinating authority uh, according to the Emergency Act. Um, among those ministries, different ministries who are responsible of the um, uh, different uh, uh, vital services as Minister of Economic Affairs and Communications, Minister of Social Affairs, Bank of Estonia, and also are very importantly local authorities with over 10,000 uh, residents who are responsible of the uh, uh, ensuring the operability of local roads, for instance, of water supply and sewerage. Uh, and there are also other fields of uh, critical infrastructure provided by the state or state-owned enterprises. So the private sector is also important involved here, talking about ports, airports, railways, and, and, and other. Uh, so um, the uh, initiative to improve legislation by, by um, government office proposed in July this year and the uh, process uh, going on is that to, uh, uh, to merge the Emergency Act, National Defense Act, and Emergency Situation Act uh, into one preparedness act, uh, which uh, we find actually the good idea uh, because the, uh, maybe the system is the regulated by the, uh, we counted, uh, more than 15 different uh, acts. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a bit too fragmented. And, and it's a uh, it's good, good idea uh, to, to merge uh, the uh, different acts. So the NATO uh, membership also influenced um, our system. After the 2014, the uh, uh, illegal annexation of Crimea and, uh, and the aggression against the eastern Ukraine by Russia, the NATO started to turn attention to the uh, um, uh, national resilience. And uh, there are seven baseline requirements for national resilience, a division of responsibilities in Estonia here is also um, uh, uh, presented. Uh, so actually we were interested if those seven baseline requirements are covered uh, by, the, uh, um, by the responsibilities of the uh, government authorities uh, in Estonia. So um, in general, uh, this is here. And also, the, uh, as you well know, the EU um, taken several initiatives and also uh, regulations uh, uh, to the uh, SIP and, uh, and uh, we also analyzed and listed the main uh, regulations, uh, EU regulations which are harmonized 
uh, into Estonian legislation uh, system and, and also influenced um, the, uh, our system. The, the, mainly, the main effort is uh, lays on the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Communications, but also to the Ministry of Interior, Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, and the, uh, also the Minister of Finance in their areas of responsibility. Uh, so, uh, about the communications, uh, here are some examples, uh, the, uh, the main, let's say, so communication activities uh, provided by the, uh, by the uh, national authorities uh, the, as a code of conduct for crisis situations um, published by the uh, government office in cooperation with the Minister of Interior, also the uh, rescue board in, in is very active in, in this um, uh, field. Uh, uh, and um, I especially like this one, the, uh, um, the um, uh, Be Ready uh, application produced by the uh, um, uh, Women's Defense League in Estonia. So this, uh, you can try, this is a very, very nice app. Um, but about the survey, uh, in October 2020, uh, the survey was conducted um, uh, among the um, covering the uh, age group 18 up to 74, um, 1,028 responders uh, found that the, uh, um, amongst the state-level objects and services which have the highest importance in your daily life is the energy, more than 80%, energy and health sector, um, more than 60%. Okay, maybe it's not surprising, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's evident here that, that those areas are, are the most important for the public. Also, the drinking water supply, distribution and digital infrastructure, transport is involved, banking are taking mainly the uh, uh, possibility to access to the, uh, to the cash in the situation of crisis and some financial market infrastructures. Um, importantly, uh, Responding to the question, I am confident that a availability of the most important state-level service objects will be assured in all circumstances, including crisis. The uh, more than 50 percent, 51 percent, said that rather yes, yes, and, and seven, seven percent definite yes. So the uh, uh, around 60 percent are, are quite confident uh, among the Estonian um, population. Um, question about uh, if whether you you like to know how work of the most important state level services and object is assured in all circumstances including crisis. Uh, the uh, um, approximately 30% said definitely yes and rather yes uh, 45%. These are, these are uh, good numbers actually. But um, some, some space for the progress also is there. Um, the knowledge, the expectation, uh, the, the more knowledge about the assurance uh, of the uh, protect critical infrastructure protection in state level and if and how the, those uh, um, protection activities are founded in all circumstances, including crisis, uh, is also uh, mm, the expectation for the communication is, is quite high. Uh, the, the more than, than 60%, nearly 70% said that yes, they would like to know more about how, how these are founded and, and the services guaranteed in, in times of crisis. And the, about the uh, communication uh, by the state authorities, the expectation uh, is also um, something that needs to be improved. Uh, the, uh, asking the, uh, responding to the question, uh, if the state institutions communicate sufficiently about assurance the most important services, the, uh, the rather no, and definitely know together the uh, approximately 50 percent. So here is uh, here we see the space for the uh, communication improvement for the our, our government side. Also, this is one of the advice also we we, we give amongst the others uh, and the con conclusion of the Estonian chapter. Thank you. Thank you for being uh, perfectly in time. Next speaker will be from Lithuania, Ramonas Vilpiashauskas. Uh, from uh, Institute of International Relations and Political uh, Science of Vilnius uh, University, who uh, has also um, prepared uh, two chapters for the uh, for the book. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, thanks for organizing this discussion uh, and. Uh, since time is limited, I will 
go through the main points of my presentation on uh, critical infrastructure in Lithuania, how it is organized and how uh, it evolved. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so, first of all, what are the key features of uh, critical infrastructure protection in Lithuania? And uh, I would first of all draw your attention to the fact that it's based on uh, two uh, regulatory ecosystems. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the first one, which actually defines uh, uh, critical infrastructure, how it is... Uh, understood and as you can see in the second paragraph it includes both objects uh, and services um, this uh, uh, regulatory ecosystem was developed quite recently with a focus on uh, cyber security uh, first uh, it was established in 2016 uh, by assigning the key role to the Ministry of Interior and then uh, reformed uh, uh, under the uh, Ministry of National Defense by consolidating several institutional responsibilities under the National Cyber Security Center. And uh, although this whole ecosystem focuses on regulating critical information infrastructure, in other words, cybersecurity matters, uh, it is those legal acts uh, which also define more generally what is, what is critical infrastructure in Lithuania. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, it includes uh, uh, a number of sectors, which you will see in a moment. Here you can see the criteria which are used when particular objects are uh, assessed and decisions are being made whether they should be assigned the status of critical infrastructure. And you can see that those criteria are quite diverse, including the effects of the interruption of uh, supply of particular uh, products and services, uh, uh, depending on the size of territory and population. Uh, also, social economic effects of interruption of those services, uh, effects on public safety, security, and so on. Uh, and on the basis of those criteria, uh, a list of different objects is compiled. Uh, this list uh, is classified, so uh, publicly it's not uh, known which objects are assigned the status uh, uh, but, well, uh, as you will see, they are in those typical sectors which were already discussed by colleagues uh, from uh, uh, Estonia, Latvia and Norway. Next slide, please. The second uh, ecosystem, which uh, goes back to mid-90s, early 2000s, uh, focuses uh, on objects. Uh, and uh, it has to do with uh, objects. Uh, usually these are enterprises uh, and the territory where they are established, if we speak about energy or transport uh, in particular, or military objects, uh, which are considered, uh, considered important to national security. And here, uh, the most important role is played by the governmental commission, which regularly uh, discusses concrete business transactions into which those uh, enterprises and uh, objects are involved and decides whether particular uh, transfer of shares, ownership, or simply purchasing of particular equipment, uh, for example, scanners uh, for the airports, uh, uh, equipment, uh, important uh, for telecommunications operations and so on, uh, can take place, whether they involve uh, particular risks uh, and, and uh, well, depending on those assessments, the Commission decides whether those transactions can proceed. Next slide, please. So here you can see uh, different lists of sectors uh, under both 
ecosystems uh, first uh, which has to do with uh, cyber security issues and which includes 14 sectors uh, and the second one which uh, is is older and which uh, as I just said, uh, uh, relates to particular objects of importance to national, considered important to national security of Lithuania, and they uh, uh, belong to one of the five uh, sectors which you can see here. And in the next slide, you can see institutions. Uh, next slide, please institutions which are responsible for decision making uh, uh, related to the protection of those uh, objects uh, which i already discussed next slide please so uh, very briefly uh, how the system both uh, ecosystems which are not identical though overlapping overlapping evolved and uh, in Lithuania, uh, the most important factor has to do with uh, threat perception originating from authoritarian states, initially neighbors, uh, first of all, Russia, also Belarus. In recent years, China has uh, attracted increasingly more attention. Um, so in response to those perceived uh, threats, uh, First of all, particular enterprises were classified as uh, considered important to national security and their transactions uh, have been regulated. And also, this has to do, for example, with the original focus on energy, energy infrastructure in Lithuania. Uh, later, uh, cyber attacks, uh, especially events in, in Crimea, when it was disconnected from uh, the World Wide Web, uh, which was part of uh, aggression against uh, Ukraine, uh, coupled with this uh, disinformation campaign, uh, made a big, big impact on security community in Lithuania uh, and increasingly more attention has been devoted to critical information infrastructure uh, leading to establishment of, of uh, rather complex uh, rules that aim at protecting uh, uh, from cyber incidents and uh, cyber attacks. Of course, uh, joining EU and NATO had an important effect on rules which exist in Lithuania as well, uh, plus certain dom domestic initiative, especially lobbying of particular enterprises um, if we speak about about the ecosystem of uh, objects considered important for national security next slide please uh, since uh, our study uh, also uh, devoted uh, considerable attention to the communication on uh, uh, protecting critical infrastructure in each of four countries there is also a chapter on how it is uh, uh, organized uh, and takes place in Lithuania. I would draw your attention to several important elements, uh, one of which are regular annual reports, uh, quite extensive reports, uh, which present threat assessments, uh, similarly to the practice uh, presented by ja Jakob uh, in Norway. Uh, these uh, extensive annual reports, I think, are uh, a good practice example of uh, proactive uh, information of uh, informing uh, uh, of population. Also, National Cybersecurity Center uh, uh, undertakes concrete initiatives uh, which aim to educate particular stakeholders and raise their awareness about uh, cyber risks and how to protect their software, hardware against uh, those risks. And of course, in addition to that, there are uh, reactions, public reactions to particular incidents uh, or sometimes uh, media uh, initiates its own investigative reports uh, related to particular business transactions, for example, purchasing of particular equipment from China uh, or, or neighboring um, third countries and 
Next slide, please. So to conclude, uh, what are the most important features of uh, protecting and communicating critical infrastructure in Lithuania? I would say what stands out is a very complex set of rules and procedures which evolved, as I, as I mentioned, in response to perceived external threats, also to legal uh, amendments due to transposition of EU uh, rules, uh, uh, the needs uh, related to NATO membership and safe, uh, secure communication among partners within NATO, also reforms of state-owned enterprises, which were part of Lithuania's succession into the OECD. All this means that instead of a system that uh, could, could have been established uh, uh, by so-called grand design, we have uh, yeah, evolutionary incremental and incrementally evolved uh, set of rules, which could probably benefit from review some sort of audit to rationalize and make them more uh, transparent. But uh, certain initiatives taken in 2017, 2018, uh, in terms of centralizing uh, the institutional responsibilities within the cyber uh, security area had uh, quite clear positive effect uh, on, on uh, 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 protection of cyber infrastructure in Lithuania, which is reflected also in in quite uh, uh, significant improvement of Lithuania's rankings in international uh, assessments. Uh, but of course, uh, we discuss uh, uh, some additional recommendations which could be implemented in order to uh, improve the transparency of the system and to more proactively inform population about those risks which uh, are related to modern contemporary interdependencies with the outside world and how to make society in Lithuania and other uh, countries more resilient to those risks. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ramunas. And our uh, final presenter, Evia Tjatkovica from uh, LIA, who has not only uh, been a superb researcher, but also taken care of the practical side of the project uh, without no project is a project. So please, Evia, floor is yours and hopefully we'll see your slides in a thank second. Thank you. Thank you, Ivo, and uh, I think thank you the whole team of the project we are at the closing stage now so it's been a pleasure and i think despite all the obstacles and sometimes um, hard days uh, we've managed to do a great job and we can see it on the table here so uh, and those who are not here uh, can can uh, access it easily also online but coming back to my presentation um, in respect to the um, Societal perceptions. This is one of the dimensions that we wanted to include in the book. Um, to some extent, we could um, call it a comparison and um, and a continuation of um, of uh, of the perceptions of institutions in respect to what time of job do they do, not only on their da daily basis for protection itself, but also for communicating the subject with the society. So arguably, we have come to one of the most exciting parts uh, of, of, of the book. And uh, let's see what are the thoughts of uh, four societies in four uh, countries. And um, uh, in terms of questions, uh, we had five of them. And uh, what we wanted to assess uh, actually was sort of three directions. The first was what exactly people call themselves the most essential services for their customary, customary lifestyle. So um, this was the first uh, sort of direction. The second was uh, their trust and confidence in provision of those services under any or all circumstances. Their trust in state actually in some form was tested in this question. And the final one, the final set of questions uh, was aimed at understanding whether 
the perception of society in respect to communication practices of institution is uh, is is okay. Let's let's call it like that. So let's see what were the answers. So the first question, uh, as already pointed out, also by Ramon, was. Uh, what do people consider the most essential things or ob objects or actually services in their life? And the answers we got across the, f the whole research region, uh, there were two types of answers, mostly energy and health dominated. Energy was the dominant reply in Norway and in Estonia, while health sector was underlined in Latvia and Lithuania which could not be surprised because um, actually it was the time when the COVID-19 pandemic just erupted. Uh, so the focus was, so was put on, on health issues. Uh, but um, uh, for instance, in Estonia, yes, uh, the drinking water also was among top three replies. But interestingly, um, across the whole research region and also in Estonia, which is widely recognized as e-country, the digital infrastructure was not that much emphasized as one could expect. It was among the lowest rated uh, services. So the next question was uh, the test f of confidence and trust and provision of those services. And um, actually, in overview, we could say that people are quite confident in all four research countries. The confidence rate is um, overall above 50%, which is kind of probably good. And if we take a closer look, then the, the most confident people live in Norway. Trust and provision of essential services is above 70%. And the next country that follows is, ta -da, it's Estonia. And um, well, which also shows a good, uh, good result in comparison to Latvia and Lithuania where people are more skeptic. And uh, again, if we put this question uh, at a glance and we look at a glance, then we could see some interrelations with broader issues and broader as aspects, for instance, trust in state institutions. Just to give you some examples, for instance, according to OECD data of 2020, the highest trust in government is in Norway, which is also the most trusting country in terms of provision of services. And the trust in government um, in, in Norway is above 80%. Uh, in respect to Estonia, trust in government is uh, almost 50%, which is also good in comparison to, uh, for instance, Latvia, which is the most skeptic country in terms of trust in government, both in terms of OECD research and also in our public service screening trust in, uh, and confidence in public services. And uh, the first common questions, uh, were intended, as I already mentioned, to understand uh, so what are the communication practices and also what is the interest level of people in the subject at, at all. As uh, rightfully mentioned already by my colleagues, uh, the subject of low interest or no interest was uh, frequently emphasized both actually by institutions and sometimes even by media, uh, at least in Latvia, but I presume it could have been used as an argument also for, for other countries uh, uh, for low level of communication from, from the institutional side. But let's take a look again to the screen and the questions themselves. So um, uh, the question about interest in the way system works showed us that again across the whole region for countries um, um, around seven in 10 people said that, yes, indeed, we are interested in the subject and then we want to know how the system works, how is it managed in all circumstances, including uh, the, the crisis. And Estonian rate was actually even more than seven in 10, it was 75% of uh, people provided affirmative answers. And um, uh, yes, um, so what we can conclude from this is that the 
the the communication or actually perception gap exists between the societal perceptions and institutional perceptions as already mentioned also by Maris because uh, some of them say that uh, well we don't communicate because you don't want to know on the other hand as we can see people say we want to know but you don't communicate um, and if we proceed to question number four, which uh, asked uh, if the society, if uh, participants of the society as taxpayers are interested in uh, more scrutiny in respect to how their funds are allocated and spent on protection of critical infrastructure, once again, we can see that across the whole region, including in Estonia, the, the f affirmative answers dominated around 60 to 70 percent said that we do want to know and we want to see uh, more transparency in this in this uh, regard and this um, actually high interest rate in terms of funding could also indicate that uh, in terms of communication approaches governments could uh, uh, communicate or talk more not only about their current spending but also about the preparatory work invested in prevention or in uh, sort of overcoming potential crises if they if they arise this is about preparedness and and uh, showing society that there are guarantees for the crisis which may uh, erupt so, and the final question we posed was very straightforward. Uh, whether society, whether people in those four research countries are okay and satisfied with the existing communication approaches uh, of institutions uh, related to critical infrastructure protection subject. And once again, we can see that uh, the most um, satisfied people live in Norway. And satisfaction rate with existing communication um, is around 50%. And the next country that follows in this regard, again, is Estonia, which is uh, around 40% uh, of respondents said that we're okay with, with the existing communication. And Latvia and Lithuania lag behind also in this respect. Uh, but on the other hand, we can see that in terms of Estonian respondents that around 60% are either dissatisfied or maybe confused in relation to this subject, which means that the, uh, the, the pathway for enhancement still exists. And um, so to summarize or to provide you some conclusions, so what, uh, what, what we can... Uh, what lessons we can make out of this. There are a couple of them that is worth sharing. So first of all, um, actually, when we talk about trust and public services, then the picture could be more comprehensive than it seems. Trust and, and provision of, of those essential services could be just the tip of the iceberg. And this question is, and the situation in general, uh, could be related to broader issues as trust in state and uh, trust in public institutions. Then uh, the second conclusion that was made is that actually the interest level of societies in respect to critical infrastructure subject as such is much higher that, uh, than often is uh, thought by institutions. So the perception get in gap indeed exists. And uh, the third conclusion, which is actually very important, is that um, societies in, in all countries, but the Baltic countries in particular, they demand for more transparency and more uh, sort of um, uh, more intense and systematic communication re in respect to this uh, subject, and also probably of more accountability in terms of uh, finances and their distribution. And this, to some extent, contradicts to the existing culture of secrecy and fragmented or limited communication approaches in the Baltic countries. And um, so um, even though Estonia looks um, comparatively better than Latvia and Lithuania in many aspects of this research and study in general, but probably the, the, the Baltic countries in general and also Estonia has something to learn from, from Norway, at least a couple of lessons, but we could uh, summarize them all in, in, in one, which um, I def defined for myself as a formula of success, and it is pretty simple. 
And the formula could be called like that, that it's an effective interaction between state and society. And we could uh, elaborate or what I mean by saying this is that once there is a public demand of information, state respond, responds to this demand by regular communication and more systemic transparency. And actually, as we can see it in the example of Norway, it doesn't seem to harm the, the security conditions too much as it's often put as an argument by the, by the institutions in the Baltic countries. And this formula at the end of the day contributes to the confidence of, of societies in their future, in trusting government and state institutions, so in better resilience and probably also in, in better functioning democracies. So thank you, that's all from me.